And how is she going to get that, like, do you have to, I guess, mail that back to her? Or how does that work? Uh, I'm going to email her. When, when y'all get through, I email it to her. Page zero? Uh, well, I scan you. Yeah. Okay, so she'll know right name. Okay. Put y'all names on every sheet. So it makes sense. Where's the place to start? So yeah, one minute. Okay. We gotta get a speech first, okay? I don't know. Hopefully, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm here to read this. Sorry, I'll solve this. Okay. Great. Frank uh, Banks, Kaufman. Hello. Now there is rampant enthusiasm if I've ever seen it. <laughs> Y'all are ready, I can just tell. Well, we're waiting on our speaker. I'm going to go check and see if he might be in the lobby.
Metric and standard. And it's got a level. Dang. <laughs> Talk about multi purpose. Yeah. Hey. I get in the way. It's uh, Thompson Rental Store. You know, here's why I like some really good stuff. Some really good. Thank you. Know. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Y'all read my lips, didn't you? Other you had the mic on. Otherwise, hmm? problems. Um, I have a question. Okay. Whenever I was looking at everything today, um, it was the problem that we did not last week, but the week before that. Mm -hmm. um, we on the page seven nineteen. We did the um, yes. Okay, we were recording the transactions for October the tenth, mm -hmm. um, and we are declaring a nine thousand dollar cash dividend. Um, I I tried so many different ways, and I could not figure out how I got twenty four hundred for preferred and sixteen thousand six hundred for common. Okay. Did everybody hear Brianna's question? Okay. When we have a declaration of a dividend like that, of course, we go to the preferred stock first. And your preferred stock, you should have a, um, I don't have my book, so I'm going to have to rely on y'all, um, a par value or a so much per share. So someone give us the, the, the numbers that we would use, the par value per share times the number of shares outstanding, or the percentage times the par. Um, so we can get to that 24, 30, is that what it was? Um, not 19,000 in total, but 16, six, for common and 2,400 for preferred. Okay, 2,400, okay. Okay, so the number of preferred shares outstanding. Um, How many was that? Is it 600? Is that gonna be? I don't know, I just don't have, I never got my problem back from this, so I don't ever know what I did. Oh no. Um, Sorry, I thought I it, So we get the outstanding from what the transactions that we've done previously? Or? Yes, you'll have to get your number of outstanding shares either from your previous transactions or from uh, a statement of stockholders' equity. But if you've had any transactions since, since that statement of stockholders' equity was prepared, you'll have to watch there and take into account the additional shares. So, if I'm correct, then we issued 600 shares of the preferred. Oh, yeah. Um, 50,000 shares of 8% $50 per value. So, it's just going to be 50,000 times 0 0.08 times 50. So your your six hundred. How many? Does, do you have any beginning balance of shares? My calculator isn't working. It's so it's two hundred thousand. Wait, what? I thought it was fifty. Two hundred thousand. Where are we at? What's the number now? Seven nineteen <laughs> on P thirteen forty one A on the right. My calculator is not working. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm just All right, let me see. Fifty thousand times point oh eight times fifty. That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have done that's what I was doing. Okay. Anybody in Ripley want to go for this one? Y'all don't have your books either, huh? No. Oh, you shouldn't. Oh, we only issue 600 shares. 
So that's what well, we they authorize 50,000 shares. Okay, we don't we don't want the authorized, we want the issue. Right, right. So that we need issues of 600, 600 times 0.08 times $50 par. There we go. So 600 shares, uh, okay. number of shares outstanding of preferred times the percentage or the what, what were you given? The percentage or the par? Percentage. The percentage. Par. Okay, times the par. Yep. And that gives you your 2400 mm -hmm. that's going to be attributable to the preferred stockholders. And then the rest just goes to And the rest of the dividends declared goes to common stockholders. Right. I just can't figure out where I got So why do states have to, why do states or federal have to charter stock? Why can they issue as much as they want at the risk of devaluation? I don't know. Um, the question was why don't why do states uh, uh, limit or does the, the charter have to specify how many shares you have outstanding rather than being able to issue all you want at the risk of devaluation? Um, I I'm not really sure. Maybe I can ask him. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Sam will answer that for us. Can answer that for us. When we, oh, here he is. When we get. After the, after the speaker, we'll take a bathroom break and then we will begin the test. And then after that, we will go home. Hello. Well, well, well. No, uh, I, no, I had it open so you might find us. Oh, no. So we know. Okay. I didn't. All right, how are you? I didn't. We didn't talk about how long you'd be here, but um, they have a test afterwards, so they probably would like you to stay all night. Uh, but I know you're not. About, about 45 seconds. Done. 45 seconds. Maybe a little longer. Than that. Uh, tonight, our speaker is Sam Vice. He is the um, manager. What I'm the financial advisor in the Selmer office of Edward Jones. Financial advisor in the Selmer Edward Jones office. I'm going to turn it over to him. I hope you brought your questions regarding stock and dividends and such because he's the man who can answer them. Okay? So, before we get started, do I have any questions, specific questions, or general questions? Uh, Live or via via TV? I would like to ask you what qualities you looked for whenever you were looking for an employer that you found in Edward Jones. What was I looking for when I went looking for a job? Well, I uh, I'm from Ovine County, so I'm from Tennessee. Uh, I changed jobs back at the end of 2000. When I did, I took my 401k to a high school friend of mine that works for Jones. And then for me taking my 401k to him, that just led to me working for Jones. Uh, so uh, I really wasn't looking, but he kept on talking and talking and presenting every time to him. I said, okay, what, what's it gonna take, Carlos? So Carlos Parr in Milan, Tennessee. Carlos Parr in Milan, Tennessee is why I'm with Ever Jones. Because I was his client and he he kept on presenting. He kept on making the, asking for the order. He kept asking for the order. And so I said, all right, what's it going to take? So, I mean, great company. I mean, Ever Jones is a good company. Uh, what I like about Ever Jones is it's a partnership. And that way nobody, nobody owns Ever Jones. Ever Jones owns Ever Jones. We have no shareholders. We have no stock people. So if uh, Mr. Ash comes to Ever Jones and wants to invest money, my only concern is him and trying to make sure what I'm doing for him is the right thing. They call it a big contract, a best interest contract. He's bringing money to me. It's his money. How can I help him? And saying that I'm trying to help him, I'm not trying to please shareholders and make my dividends go up and make my stock price go up because there is no stock. Because Edward Jones is a partnership. Nobody owns us. So I like that part about it. And, uh, and you get, I mean, you're on boss. I'm considered self employed. I'm here to sales. I think more of a service I provide. Uh, but it's, you know, you can, uh, 
you're your own boss. So there's some freedoms in that. There's also some, you know, if you don't work, you don't get paid. <laughs> so, but uh, to answer your question, I really wasn't looking for Edward Jones, but Carlos Parr kept presenting to me, and so he, he wore me down. It took him seven years, so he wore me down. Anyhow, any other questions? So you're a 1099 employee, or a UW2? I'm a 1099. Okay. Wait, that's that's, that's, 1099. that's so, interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. You have the option. You can do either way. Oh, okay. I did the 1099. Okay. Uh, because of all the tax rules that have changed, and uh, they have the option to do a, a, a 1099 employer or do the other. Mm -hmm. I said, give me 1099. Because uh, for what, what I do in a small town, it works better for me to be a 1099 employee. Mm. So I think they're funny now. Next question. Okay, so. If you're going to do anything with money, you're going to do two things with money. You can either loan your money or to somebody, or you can you can own something with it. Okay. If you're coming to an Edward Jones or Wells Fargo, Raymond James, Fidelity, you're going to be an institution. Uh, you're going to do things with your money. Now, if you want to go out and buy land or timber, or buy a business, that's another investment. But if you're going to come and Invest money, you're going to do things with money. I can either loan my money or I can do something with the money where I own something. So who has a checking account? Savings account? Give an own investment. An own investment always give you two things. They're going to give you a time frame and an interest rate. So a checking account, a savings account, a CD. You ever done a CD or your parents or grandparents or ever come a CD? But they always give you a, a time frame and a regular return. Uh, you heard the word annuity? Okay, well, if you're the word annuity, annuity means insurance. It's an insurance product. So if somebody says, hey, there's an annuity, well, it's an insurance product. And a loan investment will be a fixed annuity. Okay? Uh, now, if you own something, if you think of ownership and investment, you think of a, maybe a stock, because you own a stock. Uh, if you buy a stock, you own a stock, you own that. Uh, you can buy a share of AT&T. AT&T, let's say their price is $50 a share. Their market cap is how many shares, common shares they have times the price. Their market cap is $270 billion. So if you bought one share of AT&T, you're going on $50 of AT&T for a company that has $270 billion in market cap, which you own AT&T. You might own it 0.000570 in a one, but you own AT&T. They're sending prospectus, prospectus in the mail. They want you to vote at the shareholders meeting. And they pay dividends four times a year. You can take the dividend, put your pocket in spend, or you can reinvest it. But a stock is something you own. You own a stock. Uh, you ever anybody talk about bonds? U.S. savings bond? I mean, but you've heard the term, a U.S. savings bond. Bonds can be done from a municipality. They can be done by the government. Or they can be done by a corporation. If you're ever driving Memphis, Nashville, Archer City, and there's construction everywhere, all that money's done through bonds. Uh, here locally, Jackson Mass County Hospital does a lot of bonds. The, uh, the water sewer department from Hardman County's done them. There's, you know, there's been local bonds here issued, but a bond, they're just trying to raise capital. So they're trying to raise money to do a project. But if you want to do anything with money, you really want to loan your money to somebody, you're going to own something with it. So you think of a stock, well stocks will lead into mutual funds, will lead into a variable annuity. Uh, but inside all these, you're going to have stocks. And, and, and mutual, fund, mutual funds can't have bonds in them. Uh, 
Just like that's a variable annuity, it's an insurance product because they use the word annuity. Well, inside this investment, there's generally mutual funds, and inside those investments, there's stocks. And can be bonds also. So, any questions at this point? We're good? Okay. So, if I say investing, or if I say the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you know what the Dow is? You ever say the Dow? They don't have the market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I mean, it was down 600 points Friday, and it's back up today. Uh, it was back up Monday and today. But the market, if somebody says, all right, so let's talk to Dow Jones. And you don't, the Dow Jones means nothing to you. The market, when you watch TV or iPad or whatever you do, Okay. Well, that one's industrial average is a, it, it's a, the benchmark of how the economy does. Uh, but the Dow Jones only follows 30 stocks. You can break the economy down into sectors. Uh, there's 10 sectors. So they do three companies from each sector. So I could 30. There's like 70,000 stocks or more in, in the world, but they only, the Dow Jones Industrial Average only follows 30 stocks. And since you asked, I'll, uh, um, the information I'm handing out, if I've got extra, if, However you get to the okay, end. I can see it. So there's the top. The top is the, is the 30 shares or 30 stocks that they that are in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And that will make the part continent. So anytime if you're if you're watching the news and tell the, the market what the market today, there's one first with the Dow Jones. And the market does one thing. You know what that is? No, exactly. Flush I would say it's move. It moves. The market goes up and down and down and up. It's always moving. Uh, so. Can, can they say him and what's on here? Oh, no. You're not talking to me doing that. Oh, that's I don't, apparently, I'm not either. Can I ask me questions from TV? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> We're just a green flag group. We're scared of a lot of people. Pardon? We're You're a shy group? We're shy. Okay. We're just, if you have a question, speak up. Uh, all right. Y'all see that? A little bit. Yep. Well, that's the 30 companies to make up the Dow. If you are ever watching TV, they'll use two words. They use the word bull. They use the word bear. Any term relating to bull, if you've ever watched the news, and they said, hey, the market, it was a bull run today. The buyers were bullish. There was a bull rally. Uh, a bull means the market went up. If you think anything bear, there's a bear rally, the buyers were bearish today, it was just a bear day in the market. If they use bear, they mean the market went down. That's, uh, so, if you ever are watching the market, if the market goes up, it means there's more. The Dow Jones Industrial Average tracks two things, buys and sales, that's it. If they have more buys and sales, the market goes up. If there's more sales and buys, the market goes down. And it's, uh, Miss Wonder, have you ever heard something appraised? Mm -hmm. A house or, have you ever house appraised? Mm -hmm. How long did it take? Um, well, she had to get some comps and things, so it took her probably three or four days. All right. Central Standard Time, what we're here in Tennessee, the market opens at 8.30. It closes at 3 p.m. 
And the whole day, every second of the day, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. But every second of the day from 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, they're appraising all the companies. They're being appraised instantaneously, which just sounds kind of crazy. Get your house appraised. It took three days. Uh, but they're appraising on these companies every second of the day between 8.30 a.m. and 3 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, which just sounds crazy. You know, if each one of you, everything that you own, uh, and you had a screen that would list everything you owned, and all day long it's just changing prices because it's being evaluated. You know, the big you drove, you know. What well, was 10,000 when I woke up and got down to 7,500 at lunch, and by the time of the day ended, it was 9,800. What happened to it, you know? Here locally, and where, the video was in what city? Ripley, Tennessee. Ripley. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. The Forster twins is the Foster twins. Is that the guys played for Tennessee? The two twin brothers? Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, but here locally, there's a caterpillar. Right. And they look up for stock and it's been up and down or go back to 08, the Great Recession. They're just bottoming out. When you're thinking, what was Caterpillar doing different? Were they making bulldozers made out of paper mache? Was it just toilet paper spinning out of? Or did you know? It's it's crazy how the market works because there's so many other factors that go into it. Uh, the virus that just broke out. Uh, there's a concern about the virus went out going out and the market fell Friday. It fell 600 points. A little over 2%. Uh, but anything goes on in the world can affect, the, can affect the, the stock market. And what's so crazy right now is uh, we have a president that's being impeached. Uh, China, the trade wars with China. If y'all have never been in the trade war with China. And then here in the last three or four weeks, there was some general killed in Iran for our military. You know, there's things going on in America, but the market just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. Generally, when you have issues like that to go on. You need him? Yeah. Maybe you want to switch the camera back to him, maybe. All right. You Bill Gates here? <laughs> <laughs> hubba hubba. Anyhow, but there's, there's so many things that can affect the market. And, and some of them, you can, you can see them sometimes, and sometimes it's just obscure things that affect the market. Uh, so, any questions at this point? Uh, all right. Are there any topics you specifically want covered? Statement uh, of cash flows. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, because y'all are just I, like auctioneers in here. Anyhow, uh, if you have a checkered savings account, your your checkered savings account will pay you interest. Are you aware of that? Point oh 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 one percent. It's going to double in seventy thousand years. Just hold your breath. Uh, I can't get that. Um, are you? You need to. <laughs> no, I have no, it's fine. No, it's fine. That's fine. It's a. It's. I have to use the word. I will tell you this: If you ever run with a sharpie for the print marker, if you take a dry erase marker and wipe right over it, it'll, it'll, it'll go away. I'll take it off. Uh, so, she mentioned more dividends. Dividends are interest paid. Dividends are, are paid on on investments. Your checking account is going to pay you interest, 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 interest. But you get stocks. Stocks pay dividends, and not all stocks pay dividends. You've heard of uh, Warren Buffett. His company, Berkshire Hathaway, doesn't pay dividends. They make a lot of money. But he says, if my company makes money and I give it to us five, I don't think I'll use it wisely. If, if my company makes money and we reinvest the money, I think we can do a lot better job with the money of us doing things with it than to hand it out to the, you know, the shareholders. But uh, when a company is running this business and it's got a balance sheet, you know, Here's where I'm spending money. Here's where I'm making money. A dividend uh, is always paying off of, of excess, okay? So if you ever come to paying dividends, like Apple pays dividends. I, you know, Walmart pays dividends. Uh, AT&T. But dividends are always paid off 
the profit of the company. No company's gonna go out and borrow $10 million from a bank for somebody so they can pay their dividends. Dividends are always paid from the cash on hand in their book. So when you're looking at companies that pay dividends, they're usually stronger companies, you know. Uh, so I mentioned a while ago about owning AT&T and how AT&T has $270 billion, that's nine commas, uh, in market cap. Because uh, I said it was the, the common stock. How many common stocks do they have? The number of common stock times the, their price. Number of stock times price of stock equals mark, market cap. There's only three sizes in market cap. You're either large, mid cap, or small cap. Uh, zero to three billion dollars. Three billion to ten billion. Ten billion. There, there is no extra large. There is no 3x tall market cap. I said, you have a company that has $11 million in market cap or large cap. AT&T, turns any billion, they're still large cap. So if you ever hear those terms, those, a lot of times when you look at investments, they'll, they'll rate them on what's inside that investment. So uh, now, who's in here is counting calories? You ever count calories? And, okay, and, and what did you count? You counted fat, protein, and carbohydrates, right? I have, I have done, yes, all the right. times at some point in my life. <laughs> but, but the only thing, I was going to comment, you've only eaten three things in your life. Fat, protein, and carbohydrates, because that's all there is. Unless you've eaten cardboard or styrofoam or some dirt. <laughs> but, if you look up anything you've ever eaten in your life, it's going to break down to be fat, protein, and carbohydrates. I would say carbohydrates. Look, carbohydrates, I got broccoli, asparagus, and cauliflower. I got sugar, honey, and syrup. They're still a carbohydrate. Uh, I use that analogy because in investing, we can break it down and say, hey, you got bonds, and we got stocks, and there's another thing called cash. But if you're going to come to an Edward Jones or a Wells Fargo or Fidelity, that's your three choices. If you're not buying an individual stock or an individual bond or having one in a cash account, and you're doing a, a mutual fund, uh, here for the term ETF, an exchange traded fund, uh, an ETF is just another way to own stocks, bonds, and cash. You ever heard of UIT, a unit investment trust? It's just another product that you can, a unit investment trust. It's another way to own stocks, bonds, and cash. So just like I say in food, yes sir? So where would the purchase of debt fit into that? Debt? Yes, such as home mortgages. No, we're talking the, investing. Right, such as like the, like the 2008 kind of investing the well they, they overextend themselves what happened in 2008 is here's the population of america and here's a sector of the economy that has never been able to buy a house never been able to hold on to a mortgage heard the word default before okay you default if, if there's a sector of the if, if there's a sector of the population that has never been able, able to maintain income to pay for a house, to rent, to own, and the government says, hey, we're gonna change the rules where they can right. buy a house. We're gonna lower the, the ratings where it's gonna be easier for them to buy a house. Well, guess what? Just cause they, you let them buy a house, I mean, they're gonna pay for it and do it. And that's what started happening. Uh, it was when they did the subprime and you get into Securities. Numbers of how securities. Well, I think it's the word I'm thinking of. A, a security is just you, you own something. A security right. is a bond, a, a stock, a mutual fund. It's a security. You own that. But what happened back in 08, more or less, there's a sector of the economy that has never been able to own a home. Well, the government lowered their standards and says, hey, we're going to let them own a home. 
how y'all buy a home. And, uh, well, they didn't pay for them, and it just, there's some collapsing that started happening in the economy because uh, you've, uh, they, they overextended themselves. Because uh, a lot of times when you look at stuff uh, with insurance and then profitability, you know, they're making an assumption that I'm going to sell this unit of product, and when I sell this and it goes through the system, it's going to return me 8%. And some people will start taking part of that 8% and paying it forward to do this. So they're, you know, you've heard the word futures or doing options. Yep. So you're taking something in the future and saying, hey, it's going to make us, you know, this much of, of a percent based on what, what is happening. It's like a domino effect. Well, when this domino falls, it's going to pass this. You know what's going to happen? So on these dominoes, I can go ahead and use part of that profit to do what I need to do here. Well, when people weren't paying the mortgages and the, and the money wasn't coming back in, and this 8% they were looking at went down to seven to six to five to nothing, well then all the stuff they had done down the line of the domino effect uh, wasn't there to do it, you know? And so it just caused a crisis. All right, uh, they went back to the ranch. But is that, but the, the 2008, the Great Recession, how do we just, the, the housing market, how they changed the rules for the housing market, that uh, they, they gave loans to people who had never able to pay it, right. no, not paying it, and it just, you, you've heard the term, you have a, a pond the size of this room, I throw a rock in the middle, you know, those ripples are gonna make it all the way to the edge. Uh, and that was, and that's what happened. They, uh, the subprime, the, the whole uh, lending institution, uh, the, the market, that big rock fell in the middle, and as the waves went over, then you started feeling the effects of it. Uh, but uh, does that answer your question? Yes. Another question? What's the first step in, if you're wanting to invest in one of those three. One, two. Treat yourself as a company. You're a company. You have a job? I do. You have a job? No. Okay. So you have revenue. It's your job. You have expenses? No. Gas, shoes, computers. But if I talk to anybody, I would say you need to, you need to treat yourself as a company. Uh, Ash LLC, you know, what's his revenue? What's his, the job he has? He brings in money. He has money, he has money coming in, and then he has money going out. And we always want you to have more on this side, you know. At the end of the month, you always want to have more money than you have month. But the budget, you say a budget and stick to a budget is the best advice I can give anybody. Because uh, in the month, you'll have more money. Because uh, I mean, y'all are young. Or is anybody here, y'all 20, 21, 19? Anyhow, but have you had something in your life that happened unexpected in your life? Have you ever been injured, been wrecked? Yeah, you know, things happen. And you know when things happen, they cost money. So, uh, budget, but budget is the best thing you can do. Because I, I mean, if you came in my office say I want to start investing, start talking about investing, I'm going to do the three buckets. Uh, this bucket is uh, what's it cost you to breathe all month? Miss Wanda, if you laid in bed all month and never got out of bed, how much money would you spend? Because is paper still going to send you a bill? Yes. You got a phone bill? Yep. You got car insurance, you got property tax, you know, do you have any debt? You know, are you paying for a car? You, you got a mortgage on your house? If you lay in bed and never move, how much money are you going to spend in that month? You know, that's not going to change whether you're, when you're on your own and you have your own place, whether you're 25 or 30 or 85. You know, people say, I'm going to retire. I got to start, you know, putting my money in a safer investment uh, where I can hold on to it. Well, I'm like, well, what are you going to stop doing? 
you know, if my wife passes away, people are going to say, hey, Sam's a widow now. Cut his bill in half. You know, it's, there's only one income now. Hey, just cut it in half. Now, but again, I always ask people, what's it cost you to breathe all night? That's your first bucket. The second bucket is, oh, you're doing more than laying in bed and breathing. So you are buying food, or you ever driving a car, or you doing anything that's spending money, you know. Uh, are you adjusting the thermostat? Are you washing clothes? Are you in current expenses? Uh, in food, uh, you can go to the grocery store, you can go to Walmart or Food John or Kroger work, but you also, you like to eat out. And eating out can be quite expensive. Uh, and then you get over here, and this is, you know, you get over travel, you know, especially when you're retired. Uh, or is anyone in your house have a birthday? Anyone in your house, Mother's Day, Father's Day? You got a Valentine's coming up? So I'm gonna spend something on your Valentine's? You're gonna get a present for Valentine's? Are you buying something for Valentine's? Are you spending money? Yeah. Get your mom something then, you know. <laughs> but it's it's all the stuff. This is what it takes me just to breathe all month if I don't do anything. Well, I'm alive, I am doing something. I am going shopping, I am eating food, I'm driving a vehicle, I'm adjusting the thermostat, I'm Nothing to incur expenses, and then this is the extra stuff. Do I ever travel? Do I ever buy anybody a gift? Do I not save it for a new vehicle? Uh, but the, the best advice I can give anybody on investing is have a budget and stick to it. I mean, all working up like make Sam dull, and nobody likes dull. But uh, which have a successful company. And so having a budget is the best advice I can give you. You know, uh, I like sports. I'm going to ask, hey, call the next play. Your favorite team's playing, call the next play. You're at a football game, what are you going to call? Call the next play. <laughs> Would you like to know if you're on offense or defense? Would you like to know that? To call that display? <laughs> Would you like to know the down distance? Would you like to know the score? Would you like to know if it's the first play of the game or it's the last play of the game? You know. And in saying that, the the more I know about the game, the better the better play I can call. Because you don't know, ask somebody, I say, hey, your favorite team's playing. Well, I'm going to call the bomb. I'm like, oh, he's on defense. I'm sorry. <laughs> they sort of touched that. But you didn't tell me that, so you didn't ask. The more questions you can ask, you know, I'll tell anybody, when you come and see me, bring all the information you have. I don't know what's your debt, what's your house payment, what's your rent, you know, what do you have to pay out each month? What's your income? Are you doing retirement there? You know, I tell you, before you come and see me, I want to do, do an investment. Are you mad at your 401k? Or if you have a simple IRA, wherever your retirement is at work, because if they're going to match you five for five, that means you can pay $100. You give them $5, you get tax off $95, and as soon as you put your $5 in there, it turns into 10. I have no investment like that. So if you have a time at work, take it. You know, what's their, what's, what will they match you? Five for five, then when you're doing five, if you can do six or seven or eight, then come talk to me. But don't turn on the free money. Uh, really have to look in your budget, especially in the long run. Next question. Uh, so, I give you something to think about. Uh, Y'all are going to... Uh, hand everybody one of these. And I'll... So, if you want to talk about investing, uh, I can say, you can come and open a, a single account. Y'all, you can come and open a joint account. If you have a J-O-B, you can come and open an IRA. To open an IRA, you have to have earned income. Uh, you have to file taxes. So, uh, and this will give you, all right. Just one of the questions I have is like how Edward Jones does their investing as far as like choices, how how far how free you are to choose. 
But how much I mean, you spread out, stuff like that. There are 45,000 people work for Jones. Mm -hmm. About 15 do what I do. I have uh, <laughs> I have a smart watch. It's a lot smarter than I am. So I have a whole team in St. Louis, probably around 20,000 20, people, that all they're doing Oh, I think it's the oh, same thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Traditional and a raw. Oh, okay. okay. Traditional and raw. Traditional and raw. And then I'll, uh, I'll get, I'll hand this out to you last. So, Edward Jones, like there's like 65,000 or more stocks in the world. Edward Jones looks at all the stocks, who's your competitors, where you are in the world and just does a very deep dive. And we follow about 325 stocks. That's what we follow. Uh, and the different 10 sectors and, and categories. Uh, any investment that, that I have that I can offer through Edward Jones, there's a team of people at Edward Jones that all they do, you know, 40 hours a week, 56 hours a week, is study those companies and make sure when you come to me and say, hey, here's $50, I'm gonna start investing. And the companies we're offering, the products, the securities we're offering you are good. Because uh, y'all taking a test today? Yep. Did you study for it? Did you study so you could fail? You ever practice for a play or sports? You don't practice to lose a game. You don't come to ever Jones or to an investment company and say, hey, here's some money. I just want to lose it. Yeah. So it's, uh, and, and again, it's not our money. The money that people bring to the office in, in Selma, that were Jones, or any other 15,000 offices, none of my money. Somebody who's never met me before, saw so were Jones, or somebody's told them something about me, and they come in here with, hey, Sam, here's some of my money. I'm going to trust you with it. And here's what I'd like you to do is a whole series of questions to, you know, I want to find out what's important to you. Now, let's get on the path, and I'm going to help you stay on track. Uh, because one of those things is what you make is unimportant. What you keep is extremely important. And you've got two people here, and this person says, Hey, I'm a millionaire. I made a million, I've been a millionaire four times. That tells me you lost three million. You know, you lost me three times. Or this person over here is saying, I've made a half million dollars seven times. And I've never lost anything. Who do you want to talk to? You know, uh, so what you make is unimportant. What you keep is extremely important. So we look at risk, but Ever Jones, out of the 45,000 people that work for Ever Jones, there's only 15,000 of us, and I'm one of them that actually talks to the clients. That I'm out, and you know, clients they say, Well, here, here's my rollover, here's some money I want to invest. But it's always, you know, when you need this money, what's your plan for this money? Is it six months? Is it 20 years? Is it your never with this money? Is it for your grandchildren or your children? So what I've handed y'all is an IRA. That's an individual retirement account. So you don't share with anybody. You can't have a joint one. Had a, a husband call me, he and his wife, uh, both second marriages. He's like, I want on my wife's IRA. I said, it's, a, it's an IRA and an individual retirement account. You can't, I won't own it. I said, when y'all share a social security number, we can do it. Well, you can't do that. Ha ha. You know, it just... Some of you understand you can't have a joint IRA. Anyhow, but what I'm telling you is that there's a traditional and there's a Roth. Now, a traditional is just like a 401k. You put money in pre-tax, okay? And some 401ks now have a Roth component. But with a traditional IRA, you put money pre-tax. So if you make $100, you take $5 and put it into your traditional IRA, you get taxed off $95. That five dollars you put in, you don't pay taxes on it. And you put it in and keep putting it in and keep putting it in. And then down the road, when you retire, you want money from it after age 59 and a half. Then you pull money from it, but any any penny you pull from it is going to be taxable. So on the Roth, same, same thing, same numbers, same stipulations, same limits. But if I make $100, I put $5 into a Roth, every time I make $100, I 
I still pay tax on hundred dollars. I do not get a tax benefit for doing a Roth IRA. But down the road, when I've been putting in $5 over the years and I want to retire, whatever money is in that account, I can pull it out tax-free. So I did a little scenario here. Anyone here 25? Good, then you still got time. I just did a 40-year 40 40 year number here. Uh, So, what this is saying, so I said, if right here starting at age 25, and you put in $500 a month, which would be $6,000 a year, what is the limit? You see the limit there on your, on your two IRAs or Roth? Your limit is $6,000 a year for 20. Unless you're over 50, you get another $1,000. But $6,000 a year is the limit for 20 and either one of them. Uh, so you're 25 years old. You finally got away from UTM. Mm -hmm. Might be still with me, mom and dad, but you know, you got a UTM. Maybe Hal and Jane. Who knows? But in this scenario, I did for 40 years that you put in $500 a month for 40 years. So right here, see this number here? What is that number? It's the last number there. 240,000. Yeah. So your total contributions would be $240,000. So in saying that, oh, so here's my traditional nice handwriting. Uh, and there's my Roth. So in 40 years, You've both put in to each one of them $240,000. You with me? Mm -hmm. That's what you've put in. Now, in this traditional, you've, you've had some tax savings on that over 40 years. You have $6,000 in tax savings over your 40 years. Uh, here, you never did. You got paid, you took $500 a month and put it in there. So, you never got a tax savings on this. What do you have now in your account? At age 65, because you're starting at 25? 1.2 million. Yeah, so I got 1.235 million dollars. And that's traditional. You start using that money, guess what that money is? You're going to pay a tax on every penny you take out of there. Here in this raw, you got the 1.2 and 2, 3, 5. Yeah, it is all tax free. You will. I'm sorry. Ryan? What's going on, Mr. Huss? I'm teaching a class at UTM. Can I call you back? Oh, yeah. Sure. No, I'm helping. I'm, I'm not teaching a class. Let's back up. I'm helping with uh, with the class at UTM. I'll call you back when I get done. Okay? Okay, that sounds great. Thank you much. Watch. Okay, my goodness. Uh, so, and that's not a hypothetical, that is not a crazy number or a crazy concept, but uh, but that's that's what you can do. You can, I mean, I just picked 25 because let's get out of college, let's, let's get a career going, let's you know, get some money put away, let's make sure we have. You always want to have more money than you have month. That's just another saying. When I run out of month, I still got money. That's good. That's the way you're going to be a successful business, this Ash LLC. All right. Matthew? Yes. Yeah. Ash. Brianna. Brianna. Bailey. Bailey. Nathan Lewis. Nathan Lewis. Nathan. Brianna. Matthew. All right. But in those companies that you're going to be, that's how you always treat yourself. I'm a company. I got revenue coming in because I have a job. Now I'm spending more money than my than my than my company is making. Let's hope you don't. Uh, I mean, you're going to have debt. You're going to buy a house. You know, unless you were in the lottery or matter rich or something happens to you, generally you're going to buy a house and pay a mortgage. Uh, I always take the longest mortgage with least interest and and pay more. I'm sure there's no surrender value for paying early because. Uh, if you start doing equations with 
paying off debt. The least interest for the longest payment. So you get the smallest payment a month, and then you pay extra, and pay extra to principal. You really knock down debt fast. Uh, but uh, but that's just, that's, that's investing. That is something that uh, y'all would do one of these in your life. Uh, you might not do a Roth, but the traditional, if you do a 401k at work or a 403b or a 457, uh, that's, your, that's a retirement plan. Uh, if you, in an IRS handbook, if you get into the section where it talks about entities where people work, uh, so if you have a JLB in a place that is for profit, like you work for AT&T or something, then you're going to have a 401k, section 401, article K. I'm working for a business that is for profit, and I do a retirement plan, it's 401k. If it's non-profit, uh, a lot of teachers, you can have a, a, a library, a hospital owned by the county. It's not for profit. It's a 403B. If you work for the government, it's a 457. Those are just IRS codes and numbers. Uh, but hopefully you'll have a job where you have a 401K. That's your traditional. There are some raw complaints now with a, with a 401k, but put away money early, early. Because uh, you could run another number where somebody put away $2,000, but they didn't, this is from 20 to 65. You guys might put away $2,000 a month and started when they were 40, and they won't reach that 1.25. Do you have the tortoise beat the hare in the race? Started early. Uh, so, uh, I got you one of these and a Roth and a traditional. Okay, I'll send one to the uh, But But investing, again, investing, if you go to an investment place like Ever Jones, you're only going to invest in stocks, bonds, or cash because that's all there is, just like food, you know. You only eat three things in your life, you only ever eat three things in your life fat, protein, carbohydrates. If you're investing, the investment is going to be stocks, bonds, or cash. Uh, I mean, I listed ETFs and UITs and mutual funds. On my desk, I have a jar of marbles on my desk, and that's how it's fine investing using a jar of marbles. I, you know, I like visual stuff. I like talking with my hands. But uh, there's no rate in uh, Monero County knows what a mutual fund is or an ETF or an annuity. But they know what a jar of marbles is, and so I can explain from there. Anyhow, uh, because, well, I have each one with 100% bonds, 100% cash, 100% stock, or, you know, a mixture of all three of them. So, uh, that, that big word, diversify. So, question? I have a side question. Does Edward Jones currently have any crypto as part of their portfolio? Crypto. That's offered. Cryptocurrency, yes. No. Okay. Uh, okay. We're an old, old conservative company. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you a story to Edward Jones. Uh, there's a picture in of my office. It has Ted Jones. Edward Jones was a man. His son is Ted Jones. I got a picture in of my office. It's Ted Jones with a horse beside him and a dog in the background. And, uh, Ted Jones and Sam Walton used to ride around together because they were frugal, or cheap. Uh, they held on their money. Sam Walton is looking for Walmarts. Ted Jones is looking for a place to put Edward Jones. Uh, Edward Jones is, is in, they say St. Louis, but it's Maryland Heights. We're in, uh, if this is St. Louis, we're here in Northwest St. Louis in the Maryland Heights part of town. The first office they ever had outside of Maryland Heights they ran a wire to Mexico, Missouri. And Ted's like, we spent a lot of money running this one cable here to Mexico, Missouri. If we're gonna put more offices in, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do this and do this. He said, we're gonna come off this line and hey, can we run an office here? Can we run an office here? Can we do can we run an office here? Can we run an office here? And that's how they started branching out. But the the Ted Jones, Sam Walton story is, Edward Jones is a company, 
owned by Ted Jones. Ted Jones got mature in age, has no kids, and so he's on the company. We and Sam Walton, friends, Sam Walton took Walmart to the public and became very wealthy. Well, Ted Jones never is leaving passive ownership. Uh, if you want to make money for Jones, come work for Jones. Because Ted had two sisters. But his dad ever said, hey, let's give your sisters some money. No, no. They can have all the money they want, but have them come and work for the money. Don't just hand them money because we have it. What's that teaching them, you know? And how's it going to get that works or fields if we're just handing out money to our family because they're a family? If they don't make money and have money over Jones, how come work for Jones? They never did. Uh, one of their grandsons does what I do at Ever Jones, but he's somewhere out in Kansas, and you know, there's no big hoopla, there's no big, oh, there's Ted Jones, great nephew. Anyhow, uh, so take this point in his life with Ever Jones, where he says, I gotta do something with it, I'm gonna give it back to the company. So he gave the company to all the employees, to become a partnership. So there's a guy that has done okay with Ever Jones, uh, financially, and then comes a partner, and he really does well. So he's reading an article on the paper that says Sam Walton is the rich man in America. And he said, well, Ted, you'd be the rich man in America if he'd have sold Edward Jones and went public because he's the only person who owned it. So he gets out a pen and paper and he writes Ted Jones a letter saying, hey, you could be the rich man in America, but you know it's not to. I had a good life with Edward Jones and I have a great life with Edward Jones. Thank you because you could be the rich man in America. Well, Ted got the letter and he says, well, hey, I am the rich man in America, you know. I got a wife who loves me despite my fogs. I got four dogs. You know, two loves me, one loves her, one loves nobody, but fogs around the farm. I got a horse loader to ride. You know, I enjoy what I do. I have a few friends, and money has never been my God. Capital G O D. So that's a picture you have in your office. I have that in my office. But uh, that's what I like about Everett Jones. Is it's nobody, nobody tells them what to do. I was saying, hey, Sam, listen, we just bought 500 of these. You've got to call Matthew. Call Bailey. Brian. Brian. Well, ben. Nathan. Nathan. Nathan Hot Dogs. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. But <laughs> uh, they got a lot of sage in them. They're not that good for you, a lot of them. Uh, but that's, that's it for Jones. Uh, so, question. Anything, I mean, anything we can say or cover that I haven't, that, because uh, when you start with investment, it can get, oh, it can get wide and deep real quick. But uh, I just try and keep it simple. Uh, and if you come and see me, if you leave with no more than you, when you came in, I've done my job. Uh, I do have one. Yes. Um, okay, so if we don't end up getting a 401k with our job, would you recommend the Roth since you can take it out without the... Yes. And, and here's something else, a little caveat. Uh, you do, so here's a traditional and here's a Roth. And you're 25 and you put $6,000 a year to your traditional for 10 years, you put in $60,000. Let's say your account value is 90000 okay? Same thing for the Roth. I put in 60,000. That's my contributions over the 10 years, and my account value is 90,000. If something happens to your life, you shouldn't even get buckets in your life. If you went through all these three buckets, but you shouldn't have any buckets in your life, and you go to get money out of here, any penny you take out of here is going to be taxed. That's your current income tax plus 10% unless you're over the time and a half. This the Roth, did you get any tax credit for putting that money in there? So if you can take money of your Roth tax free up to your contributions. So if you took 60000 out of this, it's all tax free. If you took 61000 out of it, well that $1,000 you got to your made money, so you're going to pay income tax at 10%. But uh, that's what I like about the Roth because life doesn't have one schedule. Uh, but that's what I like. Yeah, if uh, if you're the job you're working does not have a retirement plan, well, put away money, get your mercy stuff, make sure you have enough, you know. But then, yeah, you can start an IRA on your own, but and but and nobody controls that. Nobody, it's yours. So it's not like 
Well, Enron or Lehman Brothers went down or some corporation goes down, oh, well, they took all our retirement. Uh, I think that happened to Henco. Did that happen to Henco today? I don't know. I've heard stories before my time. But yeah, to ask your question, yes, yeah, because in retirement, what are you going to have? Social Security? Yeah. But when you go to retire, where are you going to live on? You know, so put, put, put some away. I mean, uh, the squirrels put away nuts for the winter. I mean, they're even, uh, that's somewhere in the Bible. Anyhow, question? Ripley, questions? Ripley, you still, still good? <laughs> you look good. Oh, right there, thumbs up. <laughs> Two thumbs up? Alright. Uh, uh, anything? Okay. Uh, then I'm gonna. Oh, I have a parting gift for you. You ain't got anything else. Do write your name down. And up here. Yeah, and just write your name. You got anything else? Uh, I've got rules of compliance that have to go by. And I don't need, I don't need to be the name, it's easy to do. I can, I can send you the Oh, that's, thing. that's dumb. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. How does, uh, how does Edward Jones charge for management fees? Our management fees are 1.35 uh, based on an annual rate, but they're based off your monthly. Here, what is this? Is it profit or capital? It's your account balance. Okay. It's 1.35 divided by 12 is that number. So your, your account will be charged that every month based off your account balance. So if your account balance goes down, you pay less. If it goes up, you pay more. It's all on the same team. Anyhow, so that has my name. If down the road you have a question for me, you got it. That's that's. My, I mean, I'm at 8:30 Mulberry. You know where Todd's Discount Well, Eberry is. Right there in the same room. Uh, so if you have a question, feel free to call, and I'll. Answer it best I can. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you. Give me two or three days, and those 20,000 people working at St. Louis, that's what they're there for to answer any question I have. Because uh, I'm the one that deals with the clients. And people hand, hand me money for their stuff, and I'm the only uh, profit point in the company. So they want to make sure that, you know, taking care of their clients. All right? All right. We're good? Good? Yes. Thank you. Good? Thank you. Yes. All right. Uh, I forget your jacket. Just seeing if I was going to be honest. That was a little test. I guess you said that. <laughs> my phone. Sam. Uh, we would have seen you back here tonight. Uh, slide down here. I got one funny for you, and then we'll go. Slide down here. Uh, I have a son who graduated high school back in May, class of 2019. But uh, we was at our house two years ago, and uh, we took the cover off the pool and set over in the yard to uh, let it dry out and do a little washing on it. And then we went to get the cover folded up. And when we did, guess what was underneath the cover? That's not very good. <laughs> so Noah jumps back and he says, hey, is that snake poison? So I catch it and I see it's poisonous and it's not. So uh, I said, all right, so he takes it. He's inside the house. You hear my wife screaming from Barty Murder. Are any of y'all from Nary Central? No, sir. Okay. Well, you know my wife. It is. Uh, so I'm like, no, put the snake down. You scared her. She knows it's there. Well, just stop. Uh, and, uh, so he goes outside and he comes back in a little bit and he says, hey, I'm like, where's the snake at? And he goes, I dropped it. I said, dropped it where? He goes, in the weeds. 
And I'm like, why did you drop the snake in the weeds? He said, well, I'll show you. So he's got a live snake in his hand. He's got his phone. Going to take a Snapchat, whatever you kids do. Be funny with his friends and he's trying to do this. He forgets there's a live snake in his hand right here. <laughs> so, uh, he does this.
Next, I have we already started. Did the tech give you all your tests? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Did they have supplies, uh, calculators, and such? Okay. All right. Um, your, you'll see. I think I'll, it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions while you're taking it, let me know. There's pages back there for you to record your answers on, and. Um, <laughs> so, if you have any questions, just let me know.
Thank you. 